Hey, we are here in Snug Harbor, Staten Island at Staten Island Pride, and we're going to be talking to Tyler Ford, who's a writer, an activist, and a performer, and who's headlining at Staten Island Pride today. We're going to be talking to Tyler about their activism as well as non-binary gender identities. forward and I am agender and queer. Tyler is most passionate about inspiring others to become the best possible versions of themselves. Please welcome to the stage the remarkable Tyler Ford. You are in the public eye. You write poetry. Mm -hmm. You're doing writing for MTV. You just did a photo shoot with Happy Hippie Foundation. Mm -hmm. The shoot was amazing. Miley made me super, super comfortable. Because I didn't have any role models growing up, it is important for me to be out there so that other like young people can see, oh, this person is doing this. I can totally do this too. Like, mm -hmm. Why not me? So this poem of mine is called Too Much. Do you remember the first time you were called annoying? How your breath stopped short in your chest? The way the light drained from your eyes, though you knew your cheeks were ablaze. So have you had feedback from people who are reading your work? Someone sent me a Tumblr message like a few months ago that was like, your poetry is like putting on a warm jacket like on a cold night. And I was like, thank you, that's so nice. <laughs> oh, it's so much quieter over here. Something that I want to talk to you about is a thing that I've been thinking about a bunch, which is we've been seeing more um, trans representation, I think, in mass media. You know, shows like Transparent and Caitlyn Jenner coming out, but a lot of that has really hinged on the binary. So I wonder, um, as somebody who identifies as agender, as transgender, how that's been feeling for you. As a young trans person um, growing up without representation, I came out as a trans guy because um, I didn't know of any other alternative. Um, I didn't know that non-binary people existed. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm not a girl, then I must be a boy, mm -hmm. and like, here I go, I'm a boy now. The more non-binary people that come out in the media or the more non-binary people that are represented, um, the easier it is for us to exist. And I think it's really important that people start talking about gender in ways that it is not being talked about or that it hasn't traditionally been talked about. You're 20 now, and I still see the light fade from your eyes when you talk about your interests for too long. Apologies littering every other sentence. Words trailing off a cliff you haven't jumped from in seven years. When you um, sort of became more aware of non-binary identities and I don't know, I imagine something kind of clicked or made a lot of sense to you. Um, how was that for you? Was that like a scary process? Oh, it was terrifying. I like wasn't happy with the way I was being perceived and I wasn't happy with my body and I wasn't happy with testosterone. And so eventually, um, at my two year mark, I stopped testosterone. Then I was just like, all right, what do I do now? So I like started experimenting with makeup and like, the day I went off of testosterone, I like waxed my own back. <laughs> First of all, how? <laughs> A lot of reaching. <laughs> As I had come out over and over again, one of my main concerns was, you know, not being believed. It took about like six to eight months for me to be like, all right, these are my pronouns. I like was like searching Tumblr and searching the internet, um, trying to find anyone who like had like gone from identifying as a trans guy to identifying as a non-binary person. I didn't know like what my body was gonna look like. I didn't know like how I was gonna feel. So I was just sort of like, well, I'm doing it. To this day, people are like, oh, your pronouns are so hard and I can't use them and I just forget sometimes. But I do have a lot of friends who like will talk to those other friends and be like, look, they, them, there, it's not that hard. Like, just use the pronouns. I imagine that there's something about asking people to change pronouns and then asking people to change pronouns again that like feels like an even heavier burden to carry. Yeah. Which um, is like on us <laughs> and shouldn't be on you, yeah. you know? Anytime someone asks me like what my coming out story is, you know, I tell them that I'm still coming out. I'm coming out every day. I come out every time I have to correct someone on my pronouns, every time I introduce myself to someone. I think that a lot of people are like, oh, okay, I understand. You were assigned female at birth and now mm -hmm. you're a boy. Like yeah. I get this and I get that. Even from within 
queer and trans communities, people expect you to kind of like know who you are mm -hmm. and then stay there. Yeah. I feel like for me, existing is a form of resistance and existing is a form of activism. It's important for me to be who I am, to have the space to be who I am, to make the space to be who I am, and to create space for everyone else to be exactly who they are. I could listen to you forever, though I know speaking for more than three uninterrupted minutes makes you anxious. All I want you to know is that you deserve to be heard for three minutes, for 10 minutes, for two hours, forever. Oh my gosh, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yes. This episode really happened because so many of you asked for an episode where we talked to someone about non-binary gender identities. And so I just want to call it back to you to let us know down below, what else do you want us to talk about? Do you have people in particular that you want us to talk to? We have many more episodes coming your way, so let us know. I want to just give one shout out to your superhero abilities that you left on one of our most recent episodes. Um, in particular, Charles S., who said that uh, their superhero ability was to feel empathy for those dramatically different from themselves. Amazing, I That's think. Awesome. Yeah, Tyler, do you have any last words for the public? Oh gosh. Um, see you soon. I don't know. <laughs>